As more cameras surround us in everyday life, people who vanish are often last seen by a camera's eye instead of a human one. A video is typically considered helpful in a missing persons case, but in the following examples, it only made things even stranger. In 2014, German tourist Lars Mittang traveled with friends to Varna, Bulgaria and stayed at a resort just outside of the city. The vacation was relatively uneventful until July 5th when Mittank got into an argument at a bar with other Germans over football, which escalated into a fight, during which Mittank's eardrum was ruptured. He saw a doctor who advised him not to fly and prescribed an antibiotic. His friends offered to stay with him, but he declined their offer. Mittank started behaving erratically after he relocated to a hotel closer to the airport. He contacted his mother and asked her to freeze his credit card, telling her he didn't feel safe at the hotel. On July 8th, he arrived at the Varna airport and was cleared to fly by a doctor. Shortly afterwards, he abruptly dropped his belongings and ran off, saying, I don't want to die here. Surveillance cameras caught him sprinting through the airport and heading outside, where another camera saw him leap a fence and run into the woods. He hasn't been seen since. Popular theories are that Midtank was being targeted by the man he'd fought or that his medication for his eardrum brought on acute psychosis, a known but very rare side effect. In February 2013, a Canadian traveler named Elisa Lamb disappeared from the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles, and then a video showing her last appearance went viral. She was eventually found, but the video footage is so strange and her disappearance so mysterious that the case quickly became a sensation. In the video, Lamb is in an elevator and can be seen peeking out of it, making strange movements, speaking to someone off camera, and generally acting afraid. Viewers speculated that she was hiding from someone, possibly even a supernatural entity, an idea which isn't unexpected considering the Cecil Hotel's long reputation for being haunted. Nearly three weeks after she was reported missing, a maintenance worker found Lamb's body floating in a water tank on the hotel roof, where she had drowned. The official findings were that her death was accidental. She made her way onto the roof, which isn't normally accessible by hotel guests, and fell or jumped into the water tank. This hasn't stopped speculation about the case, though, with theories speculating that Lamb was actually murdered or that her death was part of a mysterious cover-up. Mysteries like this should not remain unsolved. Missing people often disappear far away from civilization, but Corey McKeague went missing in the middle of a residential cul-de-sac in Suffolk, England, in the early hours of September 24, 2016. He'd been out drinking with friends, driving to a club, and planning to leave his car overnight. He was spotted on closed-circuit TV walking down a horseshoe-shaped road, and he was never seen coming back. A Royal Air Force gunner, McKeague was reported missing when he didn't show up for work. Police began searching for him and discovered his cell phone had pink towers next to a road leading out of town. Then they noticed that the street contained several trash cans, which led authorities to formulate a very strange theory. McKeague had passed out or fallen asleep inside of one of the trash cans, and a garbage truck might have picked him up. If this were the case, then McKeague could have been crushed in the landfill's compactor, which was along the route police had traced with his cell phone. But McKeague's mother is skeptical of this theory. After a search of the landfill that lasted for months, no signs of McKeague's remains were ever found. As reported in Nevada Magazine in 2014, YouTuber Kenny Beach posted a comment on another user's video claiming that he'd found a strange cave during a hike in Nevada near Nellis Air Force Base. He claimed that the cave was M-shaped and put off a strange vibrating energy. Since Nellis is the closest official base to the Groom Lake area, where Area 51 is said to be located, it often appears in conspiracy lore. Other commenters encouraged Veach to try to find the cave again, film it, and upload it to his own channel. So Veach, an experienced hiker and spelunker, took a camera and went searching. In the resulting video, he was unable to find the M-shaped cave, though he did find an abandoned vertical mine shaft that went down a long way. Veach's viewers implored him to go back and try and find the M-shaped cave again, so he did, but this time he never returned. His cell phone was found by a search and rescue team near the abandoned mine shaft, but Veach himself was nowhere to be found. He's still missing as of 2021. Being followed by a mysterious person in the middle of the night on an empty street can be a nightmare, but for Trevor Dealey, on December 8, 2000, it was his reality. Dealey was attending his company's Christmas party in Dublin, Ireland. He left around 3 a.m., walking to his place of employment to grab an umbrella and check on a few things before work the following morning. On his way in, the bank's surveillance camera captured Dealey and an unknown man dressed in black at the rear gate of the bank. The latter had been standing there before Dealey arrived. The two spoke, though the camera didn't record their conversation. Dealey left the office and began walking toward his apartment. A few minutes later, he passed a surveillance camera from a different bank. This was the last known sighting of Dealey. 30 seconds after his final appearance, a man in black was also recorded walking in the same direction. 
Police are convinced that the man at the bank's gate was the exact same one that followed Dealey home, though he's never been identified and Dealey remains missing. Brian Schaefer was a medical student studying at Ohio State University in Columbus. On March 31st, 2006, during spring break, he made plans to meet up with his friend, William Florence. They got together at the Ugly Tuna Saluna and then began bar hopping, meeting up with another friend along the way, Meredith Reed. She later gave them a ride back to the Ugly Tuna Saluna for one last round. Schaefer ended up separated from his friends, who assumed he'd slipped out early and gone back home after they didn't find him when the bar closed. When he missed a flight two days later, he was reported missing. Police began searching the Ugly Tuna Saluna and found something baffling. The bar had only one public entrance and exit, an escalator leading down to the street level, which was monitored by a CCTV camera. Investigators located footage of Schaefer walking into the bar, but couldn't find any video of him leaving. All the tips that uh, we've received thus far uh, has turned into nothing. The other major oddity in the case is that Florence has continually refused a lie detector test, saying he already told police everything he knew and didn't see any good in repeating himself. On July 28, 2013, in Newtown, Connecticut, a chef and property appraiser named Robert Hoagland was spotted on a gas station CCTV buying a map of the eastern United States and refueling his wife's car. Hoagland returned home, where he was spotted by his neighbor and son mowing the grass. A few hours later, he failed to pick up his wife from the airport. After she managed to get home, she discovered that his phone, keys, passport, and prescriptions were all left behind. The lawnmower had been put away, and his car was still in the driveway. Hoagland had long been fond of wearing loafers in the summertime, but these were also still at home. A few days earlier, Hoagland had taken $600 out of the bank. He told his wife that this was to get their laptops back after their son, a struggling addict, sold them for drug money. The same night as Hoagland's disappearance, his son was arrested for trespassing near the building where his dad had paid to get the laptops back. There's speculation that Hoagland either disappeared on his own or that the men that his son sold the laptops to were somehow involved, though no serious evidence has been found to support either theory. English teenager Andrew Gosden excelled at all of his classes and held a lot of promise in the eyes of his parents and his teachers. In general, he seemed happy and showed no signs of depression. But on September 14, 2007, something very weird happened. Andrew left the house but didn't walk to school like usual. Instead, he went to an ATM, took out 200 pounds, and purchased a one-way train ticket from Doncaster to London. He was last seen on CCTV leaving King's Cross Station in London. No one knows what happened to him after that or even why he went to London in the first place. Initial suspicions were that he was meeting someone he knew online, but he didn't even own a computer or smartphone, nor did he have an email address. There's also no evidence of him arranging to meet with anyone. In 2008, a man came to the Lemster police station, which is nowhere close to either London or Doncaster, and claimed to have knowledge about Andrew's whereabouts. By the time an officer came to talk to him, he was gone. No clues as to why he left, if he meant to come back, or if he's even still alive. On May 11, 2011, six-year-old Timothy Pitson's father dropped him off at his kindergarten in Aurora, Illinois. Later that same day, his mother Amy arrived at the school and checked him out, citing a family emergency. It seemed ordinary, but it was actually a kidnapping. After getting Timothy from school, Amy took him to the zoo and a water park, and then she checked into a resort for the night. The next day, they went to a different resort in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin, about three hours away from Aurora. It was there at 10 a.m. on May 13th that Timothy was last spotted on the resort's surveillance cameras. Amy's movements continued from there, but footage after the resort shows her alone. She finally came to Rockford, Illinois, where she got a hotel room and killed herself at some point that evening. In the note that she left behind and in letters mailed to her family, she said that Timothy was with someone who would care for him and that he would never be found. There are two main theories about what this means, that she literally left Timothy with a person or persons who agreed to care for him, or that it was a euphemism that she had actually killed him. As of 2021, there's no solid evidence for either explanation. We owe that to the family to, to to continue this investigation until we find him. Stephen Kosher's career in digital advertising was hit hard by the 2008 recession. By 2009, the only job he could get was passing out flyers for a window washing company. It didn't provide him with enough income to live on, though, so he was actively searching for a better job. His family believes that this is what he was doing when he mysteriously vanished from a neighborhood just outside of Las Vegas. In the days leading up to his disappearance, Kosher covered a lot of distance in his car, driving to cities around Utah where he lived and Nevada, but no one knows why. He was in communication with some of his family during this time, but he didn't mention his mysterious road trips. On December 13, 2009, he stopped in Henderson, Nevada. 
He was recorded on a home security camera walking with a folder in his hand. Moments later, another camera nearby captured his reflection in a car window. He hasn't been seen since. Kosher was devoutly religious and had no history of crime or drugs. Police found Christmas presents in his car, indicating he probably didn't intentionally disappear. There's no evidence that he was killed or kidnapped. In fact, there's no evidence of anything suspicious at all other than the strange road trips. It's as though he simply disappeared off the face of the earth. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about creepy stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.